<laughs> Hi guys! I should have warned you. Hello yeah. everybody. <laughs> We're good. Hey. Hey everybody. We are live here today with ProCare Health and the subject or topic today is gut health. And we have our featured speaker, dietitian Katie Chapman. Katie, Yay! thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks We're so for excited. Thank this you is so one much. of my like favorite geeky out subjects. So I'm really excited <laughs> to chat about it today. And I know so many people have so many questions. Yeah. A lot of people, I've uh, realized that a lot of people do have a lot of questions about gut health, but I'm sorry, Brenda, what were you going to say? No, just the same. That's the reason why we chose it. Like we did the lot, we did a live with you, Katie. Um, It's probably been a couple months back. Um, We'll post the link to that here shortly too, but we did that live and we realized how many people were interested in this topic, you know, gut health. And that's where it came up. And um, I think that's. It's it's a great subject. And and Katie, too, tell us a little bit about what you do and how this kind of comes in on, you know, um, topics like that you help with people. Because me and you had a, a, a discussion about this in the past when we were talking about yeah. people with um, intended wanting to lose weight and how this kind of plays into it. Because I think that's so important. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I... Um... I'm a registered dietitian. I've been a dietitian for 13 years, and all of those 13 years have been working with people who are going through the bariatric surgery process or considering it or have gone through it or are many, many moons out from surgery. And this subject continued to come up, um, just one, because there's a change in someone's digestive tract, whether whether um, there is a rerouting or there is just a switch, like part of it's removed or let's say like with a band or a balloon, there's just a a different way that the body's digestion has to work. So when gut health started to kind of come up and people started talking more about microbiome, we, there's studies that connect not only um, like different gut microbiome. So lovely little like gut bugs in there. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but they communicate not only to our brain for maybe, um, sometimes like food cravings or anxiety or, um, getting anxious around food, but they also, Mm -hmm. um, help to control or help to manage like bringing in nutrients. And I, I can kind of consider them like they're going to be the bouncers to our own kind of personal club here of like, what's going to come in, what needs to stay out and um, how, if we're not getting that quality nutrients, then our whole body is going to go, Hey, like, can we lose weight? Should we lose weight? I, I don't know. I'm not getting in the right things or the right quality of things. So that's, I mean, we, we kind of talked about, you know, all, all the different rabbit holes that really gut health comes into play, not only with weight loss and, and what we see after surgery, but also at the same time too, people's comfort, right? So if someone's like bloated or just feeling like blah, or their digestion's really slow, then that doesn't also feel good in this whole scheme of, health gaining surgery, which is bariatric and metabolic surgery. So rabbit hole with us. Yeah. (laughs) Like there's so many different things. Like when we're talking about gut health, we're talking about, um, the lining of the stomach. We're talking about Mm -hmm. how food moves through the stomach Mm -hmm. into the intestinal tract. We're talking about, um, you know, how much portion wise and the types of foods, We're talking about absorption here because bariatric surgery is Mm -hmm. all about like how foods are absorbed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's just so many different avenues to explore. Um, So what would you say, what are the signs of an unhealthy gut? Or is this part of what you're going to be presenting on? Should we just kind of jump, jump into, jump into that? So I like, I always like to prepare some 
slides just because I, I'm such a visual person. So. Oh, me too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love to have something on the screen to be like, oh yeah, that's me. They're talking about me. <laughs> so I do have some symptoms kind of in that. So I think first let's, let's kind of, um, maybe dive into that and I can share my screen and I want to go over some of those like signs and some symptoms or something that someone may feel. Um, talk a little bit about the kind of the, the terms that are out there, right? Mm -hmm. Prebiotics, like postbiotics, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, then you all, symbiotics. I mean, there's all different ones that are out there. Um, and then some other just kind of some things that can help food wise and, and things like that too. So if it's okay, I would say let's dive in. Um, yeah, if any yeah. questions have come up, I'm happy to make uh, sure that I answer those either along the way or now. I don't see any just yet. So we are good to go to jump right in. I went ahead and uh, yeah. shared the um, the other event that we did with Katie, and I'm going to post part two here in a minute. We talked about protein. I'm pretty sure that's when all the questions came up with probiotics. So um, we've done a few with her, actually, if you guys want to check out our Crowdcast channel. But other than that, I'll let you guys get in there. Yay. Okay. Well, I'm going to, you know, technology is always great, you guys. So <laughs> we're going to try to Wait, do knock on wood. <laughs> no, no, I'm all like, we're going to do this. I got it. We're, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay. Third time or fourth Maybe. time's a charm, you know? Yay! Oh, right? <laughs> we got it. So, yay. Okay, perfect. Well, listen, I, just so you guys know, I can't see the chat, so please yeah. feel free to interrupt me um, if something comes through. By all yes. Means. Absolutely. Um, great, great. So, I'm, uh, let's dive in here a little bit on, on gut health and what we're talking about. So, one, I think the term like gut microbiome is thrown out there so, so much. And what does exactly that mean? What is it? So our digestive tract, and that includes all the way from our mouth to our bums um, and everything in between, and mostly our intestines, which is that picture in the middle here on the screen. Um, they are populated by a whole city and town of bacteria, archaea, eukaryotes, and those are just the, the kind of um, different types of small, small microbes that populate our digestive tract. And they, they do tons of different things. They control our metabolic health, so how things absorb and how things are utilized in the body and metabolized or break down in the body. They actually are they help to provide an immune barrier as well. So that's why I always like to call them our bouncers because they are the ones who are definitely letting things in, keeping things out. And then the last part is they, they do have that communication um, surrounding some of our disease states too. So lots, lots of things happen through that digestive tract. They also do quite a bit of gut brain signaling. So um, for some people may have heard what's called the gut brain axis. Um, and so that's just saying that your digestive tract and how it absorbs things or how it utilizes things, it communicates with our different systems in our body. So endocrine, immune systems, and even our nutrient systems and tell our brain um, different information. Like I'm getting enough nutrients, I'm getting enough food, or I don't have to fight off a disease, or my blood sugars are really, really in line. And our gut helps to be part of that process. Um, so a couple different different things that, that our microbiome is utilized there. So some signs that our digestion, our digestive tract isn't doing so well. So a lot of people that I see will usually complain of something going on with their stomach or like their, their intestines. So diarrhea, constipation, gas, bloating, abdominal pain. And I know some of these things show up just in the surgical process. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I, I also want to like piece out 
is it is it part of just after surgery sometimes we'll see constipation or diarrhea for different reasons um, or is this been happening for a long time um, I also want to note too that sometimes people have the situation going into surgery and so sometimes surgery just kind of like I think I think of this as if our microbiome is a town sometimes surgery kind of like picks up a house shakes it around and places it back down Mm -hmm. And in that process of kind of putting all the things back in a way, like you got to put the furniture back in the right spot and oh my gosh, you know, all of that process then, um, and if it wasn't maybe so, so uh, neat and tidy and in the right spots in the first place, surgery can sometimes make those symptoms feel a little bit worse. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I also put some other kind of, um, other symptoms down here and i also want to point out the last one so that that kind of unhealthiness or like let's say signs of it so eating highly processed foods or sugars can kind of worsen the situation but sometimes if people have really really high cravings for these things that is also a sign for me that their microbiome is off so um Sometimes I, I kind of look at that of like a symptom <laughs> and a sign, um, but also something that doesn't help. So, so we might want to explore this of not just looking at like, well, obviously, let's change how you're eating. Um, sometimes that's easier said than done, um, especially if those cravings are coming um, really from a microbiome kind of area. So some, some, some signs with that. So I do want to talk about all those terms like prebiotics, probiotics, fiber, all of those things. Um, any questions kind of so far that's come through? I just want to make sure that I always pause. I think just people are coming in and we're saying hi to them. Oh, Besides yay. that, we have quite a few people that's joined us. Um, awesome. I don't, I don't see any questions. Brittany, do you see any on, on our other platforms like Facebook? Sorry, no, I, I keep, uh, sorry, no, I keep muting myself so you guys don't hear me typing. <laughs> it's totally fine. Well, no matter how quietly I do it, someone always hears it, so. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm just answering, everyone's saying hi. We have a few hi. people from Atlanta, Georgia. Rhonda's, Rhonda's always with us. I forget where she's from, though. Um, oh, awesome. But yeah, Yay. we're so happy you guys are here. Okay. Um, we don't have any questions yet. No problem. I just wanted to make sure. So as I as I keep diving in, I'm sure things will come up. And everyone, thanks for joining. And if there's any questions that come through or you have any questions, feel free to pop them in that chat. So yes. I want to talk prebiotics, probiotics, fiber. And then I'm also going to mention like postbiotics and symbiotics because these are, there's some new terms that are coming out. I think they're so, so confusing and being like, do I yeah. need to take something? Do I not need to take something? Like what, what is happening here? For sure. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's hard to keep it straight. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. And then, and then honestly, like if you don't know, like I, I just tell people like, just ask, like if you don't know that that can sometimes be helpful or if you feel like, you know, you need a deeper dive on your gut partner with someone who knows some things about gut health and that can always be helpful too, especially if it's getting in the way of enjoying life um, for you. So some definitions here. So let's talk prebiotics, as I said, all the different ones that kind of help or make sh make up the microbiome. And then we also have like postbiotics too, which the microbiome makes, um, and it's kind of like their byproduct, but it can also then go back into the system and feed others. So interesting little, interesting concept of this mm -hmm. whole working system. Um, so the main ones that I know most people have heard of is prebiotic, prebiotics and probiotics. So prebiotics are food components that they promote the growth of good bacteria. So like awesome bacteria, they promote the growth. So I always tell people like prebiotics are basically like food. 
<laughs> for our awesome bacteria. So um, I put some foods actually up there that contain a really nice amount of prebiotics in them. Um, and so that's the easiest way to think of them. Like, yes, you can get them in a supplement form, but also there's, there's some really great food forms of prebiotics. And then post or excuse me, probiotics. I um, I always want to say the post ones, but probiotics are are probably the ones that people maybe have heard the most of. And those are like live microorganisms, live those little microbes that are eaten or that are taken in a supplement form that help to populate the digestive tract. So I always think if you have a sandbox, it's like adding more friends to that sandbox <laughs> to, to create, you want a really like lovely, good bacteria kind of, um, kind of a uh, uh, street or house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the city kind of type <laughs> thing. Um, so you, you want really nice neighbors. You want everyone to have this like lovely, lovely, you know, landscape lawns and picket fences and all of that creep stuff. Um, then symbiotics. Okay. So symbiotics, I've seen a couple new products in supplement form, actually, that talk about symbiotics. And so basically they, t they have both probiotics and prebiotics. They, they, they contain both. And so um, some foods are actually kind of made or fortified sometimes with probiotics and prebiotics. Sauerkraut and kimchi tend to have them um, naturally or added in. But um, I, I've seen this term come out more and more with supplements. So I just thought I wanted to mention it as, as we're talking about this whole landscape. Um, and then postbiotics are products kind of, um, they're the byproducts of our good microbes. So they eat fuel, <laughs> they eat the, that, those prebiotics, and then this is what they kind of secrete. But these postbiotics can also be used to feed some of the other micro microbes in there. So I just think like, it's kind of like being able to give sugar, uh, like, you know, mm -hmm. one egg or a cup of milk or things you borrow from your neighbor. <laughs> it's like that, having a bit, um, being able to provide to the other neighbors on the street. And so these actually really, really help to support the immune system mm -hmm. and our kind of gut barrier or gut wall. So pickled foods or pickled items um, typically fall in that ca category. And I mentioned butyrate on here too. That's what a short chain fatty acid is. Um, and so that, or that's one of the short chain fatty acids. And oftentimes I see that in supplement form. So um, again, just I wanted to mention it because because all of this information is out there and I think some of it gets gets really confusing. Sure. Um, and then the last is I just want to talk just quickly fiber. Like, hey, what is it? What do we look at? So, um, fiber as a whole is uh, the, I consider fiber like the scrub brush for the whole intestines. It is one of the most essential things for gut health. And so um, it helps to kind of form those like postbiotics. So it also is something that um, feeds kind of our good microbiomes and um, kind of helps to um, kind of share with the neighbors, let's say. And so we have two, you know, we have two types of fiber. We have soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, most supplement lines use like a soluble fiber, which kind of tends to sometimes bulk or bloat someone. Um, so, so fiber sometimes doesn't feel so comfortable for people, but food actually contains both, both fiber forms. And so I like both of the fibers because they work in different ways within that gut. And so um, fiber is a huge, huge component of gut health that scrub brush for the entire digestive tract. And you can find them really, really easily. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, nuts, seeds, beans, great one too. So I want to dive into kind of like some signs of gut health and, and what what maybe some recommendations I would say to, to take. Um, 
everyone with me so far, questions, anything like that? We do have two questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if maybe you're getting to answer these. Yeah, that's fine. I'll uh, tell you. <laughs> oh, I thought, didn't uh, Scotty or someone, Rhonda, maybe ask a question here, Brenda? I don't see it anymore. I see. So I had it up in the answered questions. I put it, there was, um, Scotty says, is it good to take, let me reopen the topic. Oh, is it good Um, to take both pre and probiotics? I'm assuming she means at the same time. uh Yeah, yeah. So if you're doing that in a supplement form, and I'm going to talk about supplements. I I wanted to mention overgrowth just because that does come up. But Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so if someone's taking it in supplement form, um, you can take like a, like a probiotic and a prebiotic. Um, You could actually take a symbiotic, which combines both of them, usually in one supplement. Um, but you can take them, yes, at the same time. They won't be counterintuitive because you already have, you already have an environment going on in there. So the prebiotics are like, hey, we're going to feed what's going on in there. And then the probiotics are like, hey, we're going to add, we're going to add friends to that picture. Hmm. So they don't work against each other. That's the nice thing. Um, I think that for a lot of people, I tend to see prebiotics they'll get from food, and then sometimes they'll take a probiotic for a little bit of time to help populate in a supplement form. Okay. Hope I answered that, Rhonda. <laughs> yeah. How about, Brittany, I think you had a question here. Yeah, I'm not, and once again, I might be jumping ahead, so I apologize. I know you have a lot of information to share, but um, I actually had another dietitian ask me this question, so that's what made me think of it. Um, so once someone has, uh, surgery and they're Mm -hmm. looking for a prebiotic or a probiotic or maybe a symbiotic, like you said, how long after surgery should they wait to take those? Or is that something they can start taking immediately after? So usually something's going to be in in a, in a capsule form. Mm -hmm. So the one, you know, right, check in with your surgeon on when you are okay to take that capsule form. Right. I think that's like the first and foremost thing, safety first. Um, and then after after surgery, like there's not there's not like uh, you can't take them early on. I usually just from practice and from doing this for so for so long, I find that the first three months everyone feels like they're trying to get everything in. Mm-hmm. I got my vitamins. <laughs> oh, it's like overwhelming. Stages. It's very overwhelming. So. With, with like a prebiotic, postbiotic, or if we're just talking like supplement, right? I almost would be like, wait till that three month mark. It's mm-hmm. not gonna make or break in those those first kind of times. And like, it might be more effective to be in a spot where it's less overwhelming. Yes, I yeah. agree. Yeah, <laughs> so, but there's no, there's no um, let's say like concern that it won't be useful if it's taken earlier. Um, I just think, I, I know for many people, it's like, oh, there's so many things to do at the beginning. So. <laughs> just take it one day at a time. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. But that's, that's a good question, though. Um, All right. I want to talk, I want to just talk overgrowth just because I, I, I hear this and I actually see this after surgery sometimes and so i just wanted to mention it again like i always find these um i always find these to be so useful for people to kind of help be a part of their own health journey to be like hey i feel this way what's going on in there versus just like i had surgery and then i still have some floating (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. And I guess that's okay. I, you know, so so just to kind of give some people some frame of reference of like, well, what can happen and what can what can occur, um, especially in the in talking about the surgery kind of space, let's say. So overgrowth just means that, and I always tell people like, we have awesome bacteria, we had not so awesome bacteria, and I don't want to call them good or bad because guess we still see the not so awesome ones. Um, 
in, in our microbiome. And also, we want to make sure that um, they just don't like overgrow. <laughs> so we see them, they're useful, but they're also ones that are more like aggressive or more mm. opportunistic. So let's say we have that like lovely street <laughs> with our houses and our neighbors and our picket fences and all that great stuff. And let's say some, one neighbor kind of like leaves and vacates their house more of our not so awesome bacteria is like what there's room there's a house okay i'm gonna move in like i'm there i'm moving in and they're the ones that can can kind of tend to like overgrow a little bit easier or they just take over those houses a little easier so let's say our like prebiotics or our gut health kind of goes down a little bit maybe we're not um always being able to eat all of the kind of like colors of the rainbow and all the fiber that we need to create a thriving city in there our opportunistic bacteria can sometimes be like oh i'm in i'm like let me let me go there let me take over and so the the term that is often called is like SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth i, I you know and I, I i do see this um it's not so common, but I do see it. So I wanted to mention if someone's like, hey, like I heard I have overgrowth or I heard about this, like what mm -hmm. is that? And so it, it just means that there's an imbalance within there. And so why does this kind of maybe happen with surgery is that surgery happens, that house is shaken up and like placed down. Yeah. <laughs> we might have some other kind of like medical conditions and let's just say that like maybe weakens our normal our good awesome bacteria and then those healed tissues can kind of make like our ground like a little bit not as like smooth or straight so as things are shaken up and they're repopulating we might get some more that are like, oh, I wanted to move in there. I got there first. <laughs> I'm going to take over that house. Um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's just like a bit off. And so one of my most common signs with that is actually like bloating that happens like they're, you're fine in the morning and you don't feel bloated, but throughout the day, it gets worse. Yeah. So it's not like a, and I tell people like, um, let's say you ate something and that didn't digest so well, and so you'll get a little bit bloated and then it'll come down. That's more of like a food related or a digestion related. But if it's like, hey, it, it, it happens to where like I'm fine in the morning and then all of a sudden it keeps going, then I would maybe start thinking like, hmm, okay, let's, do we have to rebalance some things in yeah. that way? Yeah, it's an easy kind of, like look at it. So I put some symptoms here of like overgrowth. A lot of them are really, really common, but that's why I mentioned the kind of like the bloating and I would say the gas too. Those are two of those that I see that when just things are a little off and it doesn't you know, have to be like this, like overgrowth that sounds so serious, but it's like, huh, what can we, what can we do for that? So I wanna talk about like just supplements next and then that way it'll kind of go like, oh, should I take a probiotic? Should I not take a probiotic or a prebiotic or a symbiotic or what can I do if I'm feeling some of these symptoms and I might, I might think things are off. So looking at these symptoms that yeah. we had listed, um, yeah. I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, but uh, a lot of these can be I mean, it's not uncommon for people to have at least two or three of these symptoms after surgery anyway, right? Yeah. So yeah. what would you say would be a good indicator that maybe they they do need a supplement, such as a probiotic or, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, first, first things first, I'm always, like, looking at this of, of, of hey, did you have these symptoms before surgery and are mm -hmm. they still there after surgery? Like, is this kind of your your usual lay of the land? <laughs> is this <laughs> normal for you? <laughs> more, right? Is this normal for you? And it's true. Like, I, I'm always wondering, mm -hmm. like, hey, or do we see a change or do we see it worsen after surgery? Um, just because that gives us a helpful timeline. The other thing, too, is I'm, you know, I'm looking at, like, hey, what are you eating? How are you eating? How often you're eating? And just kind of like taking a deep dive. Is it is it just like some things need to be better, like put into place? So 
Um, if I, if I'm kind of sitting here looking and I'm going, huh, am I maybe not, um, eating as often as I should, or these symptoms really come up right before my next meal or, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I mentioned kind of that, like bloating of like, of like, do I wake up in the morning and I feel okay, but like, it doesn't matter what I eat throughout the day. And then it, it gets kind of like that bloating happens and it stays and it worsens and I'm bloated at night. So that's what, would what you say would I'm be a kind of look at. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. What yeah. were you saying, Brenda? Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but what would you say would be a reason that causes bloating? I mean, what so, is the physical reason that our stomachs would bloat? Obviously extra gas or extra air, but what would be some reasons related to this topic? Yeah, so our, our like, let's say not so awesome bacteria, mm-hmm. they give off, like their byproduct. So they, they take in their fuel and their byproduct is gas. Ooh. So if I have a lot of those not so awesome ones <laughs> and then they're, you know, then they're kind of like, oh cool, yeah, I'm being fed. And like naturally, like my, my give off is gas then that's where that's where I find that people just get kind of like that worsening over the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's, that's more often what I see with bloating that is just continuous. Um, bloating can sometimes happen too when someone's really, really constipated. So yeah. right after surgery, some constipation does happen and I'll look and I'll be like, Hey, is your fluids balanced? Are we getting in some fiber or is it all just kind of like how we're eating just one note if it's just protein and we don't have some balanced other things going in there, um, then that can make someone constipated. And then in that way, you'll be bloated too. Yeah. Yeah. This can be so, um, gosh, I mean, there is so much we know in terms of microbiome now that we didn't know like 10 years ago. That's awesome that's though. Why, it's awesome. But that's why I think it's coming up more and more. And I think I'm trying to give some kind of maybe some like just thoughts around it of like, oh, this is what you might be experiencing. Or, um, you know, if someone says like, hey, how's your gut health? <laughs> what exactly does that mean? What does our gut microbiome mean? Yeah, because you hear those words, I mean, pretty frequently, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. And it, it's just nice to know a little bit more about it. So Yeah, yeah. And it's also like the digestion part of it, too. Like, does, do I feel like my food is going through and, like, I eat and I get full? Or does it feel like I eat and I'm not getting full? Mm-hmm. And, or do I eat and it feels super sluggish, like I can feel it going all through my intestines? That all has to do with um, gut health too, actually. So a couple things that I would say to support digestion. Um, Some foods that may not help. Artificial sweeteners actually will, um, they they tend to kind of give some fuel fuel to our more not so awesome bacteria. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so so we will use them. We'll see them. So, you know, it's not that it is like, oh, we're going to never do this. But let's say, let's say um, if, if we have stuff that is always artificially sweetened, like from, <laughs> from, from morning till night, then I'd be like, ooh, okay, are we, you know, and that's usually in our processed foods too. Right. And then I go like, huh, okay, well then let's maybe look, work on getting in just some more, like some straightforward, like food. Um, and that's of course talking a little bit further out from surgery. I know at the beginning too, um, that's really tough. You are reliant and, and kind of being like, oh, we need to look at, um, you know, our protein supplements and things like that. So by all means, it's not like you won't ever get these in. But I always kind of look at this as like, hey, what are some things that can help um, or that may not help in this case? So if it's someone who's already struggled with stomach issues, um, you may be before you get surgery or even after surgery is fine too, but uh, looking at this list might help you a little bit. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. And I would say for those before surgery who have some just like, let's say like stomach issues and, and things like that, I, I almost, I almost would say to um, even, you know, even start working on like, hey, can we do prebiotics with our food? Mm-hmm. Or even taking a probiotic supplement to just kind of help this a little bit before you even go into surgery. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, did you say that that yeah. um, the that the biggest thing is is um, with with the types of foods is the breakdown, like the, the actual digestion of food. So the reason that probiotics, prebiotics, and some of the other ones that you mentioned are helpful is that they actually help break down the food in a in a better way. So like the foods that were listed to me are things that can be a little harder to break down mm-hmm. and can cause an excessive amount of irritation to the stomach lining or mm-hmm. an increase in the amount of acid in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Yes. So those things, yeah. Yeah. And so so your those little microbes, those are the ones that they actually help in that digestion part. They actually help in that breakdown part. So when so they are fed like if we think of this whole thing of like they're fed with prebiotics and then we eat something that they can't easily break down and you use as as fuel, then it is going to kind of irritate them. Yeah. (laughs) It is going to be harder. They're kind of like, oh gosh, okay, what do we do with this? Let's push this through. (laughs) And so it it is one of those that they're, they can try to break down, but it's not fuel for them. To kind of put that maybe, I don't know, in a, in a, in a simple visual, I guess. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. So I kind of put some like beneficial foods here. Um, and, and a lot of it is just like straightforward whole foods. Some of it is that, that kind of like pickled or, or um, fermented foods as well that can be helpful. Um, and then and then just looking at stuff that has fiber is that scrub brush for that digestive tract. Um, and I always try to start with foods first before I go into supplements. If I possibly can. Yeah. But if I need to go the supplement route, I do want to do that. <laughs> so a couple of things that I look at supplement lines. So I do look at probiotics and that's usually in a capsule. The two probably most kind of like popular forms is um, lactobacillus. That's the first term. They're really long term. So lactobacillus, and there's always like a second (laughs) part of that. And then bifidobacterium kind of family. And there's a second part of that. And so those are ones that help to populate, help putting people in the sandbox. So if I was looking like supplemental wise, and if I'm telling, like if I have some stomach issues before surgery, I would consider like a probiotic. And I would try to get my prebiotics from food. Um, you can find prebiotics in a capsule form. Or as I said, you can find the probiotics and the prebiotics together for a symbiotic. Those are both available. A couple other ones that I think can be helpful that um, that are out there too. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii and um, S. Boulardii. That is a, considered a probiotic, but it is... Um, It's actually a yeast. And what that does is um, that helps to tighten someone's gut lining wall. So if someone feels like, hey, when I eat something, I just kind of feel really lousy when I eat. And it kind of doesn't matter what I eat. And um, it's not that I have bloating. It's not that I have cramping. It just maybe feels a little bit sluggish. I would say Saccharomyces boulardii is a great one for that, to just build up that integrity with that. Um, I put grape soup, grapefruit seed extract and ginger on here too, to just kind of um, put in of like, gosh, if someone feels like they're having some bloating or some things that are happening over time, 
grapefruit seed extract can sometimes be helpful for that. Mm -hmm. And then ginger is a little bit more soothing. So people oftentimes are like, oh gosh, I have an upset stomach. Um, and I put those out here, there are some just little things to kind of help people on their own. I will say that all of these things, I wouldn't have someone on it forever. So that's the other kind of caveat is like even a probiotic that is awesome, we're adding things. We're adding new new people to the party. That's great, but I would probably have someone on that same probiotic mm -hmm. for about six months. <laughs> and even with the grapefruit seed extract and ginger as well. And the reason for that is because we want to be, you want diversity in there. Right. We want all different ones. So if we just have the same probiotic that we've been on forever, mm -hmm. and I heard this, and I don't know if you guys have heard this or not, but I've people will be like, oh yeah, I t I've been taking this probiotic for years. And at first it worked really well. And then it doesn't seem like it's really doing anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's because you, you do want to change things out <laughs> here uh, every once in a while. Yeah. I, and I have heard people say that before. It. Um, I actually heard one of my friends is a nutritionist and she, she likes oh. to tell people just like you use the same shampoo over and over again, sometimes you don't get the same results. So switch mm -hmm. it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So mm -hmm. about six months is where my usual kind of cut off. I have some people that change out every three months, but I usually like look at about six months with that. So um, some, some just like, you know, general, general kind of supplement part to all of this. So. The main thing that I look at with kind of supporting our digestion and supporting that microbiome, like definitely we talk about like that, the fiber, the pre, the probiotic and all of that, but also the variety of like foods and color. Um, and color just helps to look at some of the, um, like the, the anti-inflammatory effects and, and, and also tends to have fiber part of a colorful food. Um, and then uh, fluids and water definitely help, especially with those fiber. So whenever you add more fiber, you gotta add more water because they work together actually. Um, movement helps to also move that digestive tract. Um, stress also can affect your digestive tract too and that microbiome. And then when just kind of look at this, you know, utilizing some supplements. Can, can possibly help. So, um, yeah, I kind of, you know, that that big picture of, of when to use and, and when not to use. And if you're uncertain, um, I would just, I would give someone a three month, like just kind of try something for about three months. Um, know that supplements are a slow burn. So it mm -hmm. usually takes about a month or two to kind of see if anything's happening. It's not like um, you take, take it once and you're like, oh, magic oh gosh you know that would be great yeah. if it was <laughs> but um it's not always like that so um i usually will be like give it about a three month try and if there's there's some good things happening then cool stay on it for a good six months um if not then maybe switch it out or maybe hook up with a practitioner that can kind of maybe get like get some minute stuff to you so I wanted to put my information up here just in case for yes. anyone, um, if I can help answer a question, anything like that, I am happy to do so. Um, and so you can definitely reach me, but this is a subject that, oh, there's, there's so much information with it, but I hope you got some tidbits on um, where to at least begin or what to maybe look at. Perfect. <laughs> do you do um, telehealth at all with, with people or if they were yeah. going to reach out to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do telehealth. Um, absolutely. So um, there's, there's certain states that I can't practice in, but I'm always happy to guide people through that or connect people if I can't see them. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do see patients through telehealth. Um, and the other thing I, I sometimes will do if it's, it's, you know, just this is such a sidebar, but since we're talking about the gut microbiome, I do some gut microbiome testing as well um, for people at home. If 
we need to like really, really dive in there. And they have some digestion stuff that is just not very clear. And so sometimes we'll do that too as well. So I wanted to put that out there if, if someone's like, yeah, I just, I need some help to look at this closer. Are you kind of talking about H. pylori or what are you talking about? So there's actually um, some, there's at-home stool tests that actually can look at your gut microbiome. So they can look at your awesome bacteria, your not so awesome bacteria. So you can see like, hey, is something not grown enough or is something overgrown? And what's going on in there? Sometimes it'll pick up H. pylori too um, as well. But I use it. I use it with people when it's like, hey, I've had these digestion issues. My, I went to my doctor, like everything's come back clear, like the major things, right? Like I had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy and we did a breath test and we did, uh, we checked a uh, stool test. <laughs> um, and so sometimes I'll want to take a little bit closer of like, well, maybe just, are we off just a little bit? Not enough to, not enough to be like, you have this diagnosis, but it, it's enough to be annoying, let's say. So, absolutely. I and do that with some people, and it's at their home. Um, Brittany just Brittany just mentioned something, and Katie, you've been a part of yeah. um, helping ProCare Health with some of their vitamins and knowing yeah, what yeah. things to add and not add. And Brittany just yeah. posted a link. So our sponsor today, ProCare Health. Um, does have some things that we could we could definitely talk about here. One of yep. them is a probiotic. It's a multivitamin with probiotics, and then also we actually have a uh, fiber supplement too. So uh -huh. let you talk about both of those. Awesome. Brittany, it looks like has posted the link to the um, ProCare multivitamin with pro probiotics. And I went ahead and posted that link on Facebook awesome. too. I wasn't. Some people just aren't sure. Um, well, I guess I shouldn't say aren't sure. Some people just don't know that we offer probiotics and um, our prenatal products too. It's always a surprise. At least mm -hmm. that's they're like, wait, you have those too? Yes, we do. So, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think what would be nice, like when we were talking to you about like um, kind of shuffling through probiotics, like yeah, you know, right. The nice thing is you could be like, I'm gonna do the one with probiotics for a little bit of time. Make sure like things are just like friendly in there mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone's getting along <laughs> playing around the sandbox, um, and then and then switch it out then to be like okay i'm going to do the one without probiotics for a little yeah. bit and just then just kind of help to make sure that things are staying up to speed in there yeah for sure mm -hmm. um but so i'll go ahead and share our screen and just show mm -hmm. uh for anyone that's interested in you know where how to find that product i did post the link but i'll go ahead and share it um can you guys see that i can yeah okay so <laughs> the links for the fiber too okay so you want to show that as well that'd be yeah cool. sure so our the probiotic is going to be found under the bariatric multivitamin because it, it's it's still for bariatric patients um, it has 45 milligrams of iron in it as well. The only difference um, I will say is that if, if you're familiar with our our regular vitamin, meaning the one that doesn't have probiotics in it, that one is a once daily formula. However, our probiotic is twice daily. So I do like to let people know. Um, and also like Katie mentioned, um, this is a veggie capsule. So it is a capsule. Um, it, it's 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 a veggie capsule because it takes little stomach acid to still um, break down. However, as Katie mentioned, make sure that you're talking with your bariatric surgeon or program dietitian, whoever it is, and make sure that capsules are safe for you because um, we know that sometimes that's why people start off on chewables, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's where you can find this at. It has 15 billion CFUs. Um, and it has iron in it too. So I'll go ahead and show you guys where the fiber is at. It's gonna be under vitamins and minerals. And we have our fiber cell here. A lot of people like this because um, there's no preservatives, no sugar. It's, 
Really, um, it's easy to blend too. Yeah, it's it's really, and it's not. I mean, it's not that expensive. It's really affordable. So, um, if you're looking for a little bit more fiber in your diet, like Katie said, that can also be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that might be easier for some people than totally switching up your vitamin, maybe just adding, uh, another fiber Mm -hmm. product into your diet somehow. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say too, just, um, uh, make sure that you're just adding what, when you start increasing your fiber, that your Mm -hmm. water is is set too. That's where I notice a lot of people will be like, fiber doesn't feel well because they're hardly getting any water in and then they're trying to add fiber and then that doesn't always feel good. But, um, definitely I'm, I'm like, that's a, um, it's just a five gram of fiber, the fiber cell, which is a a nice amount, but not overwhelming amount that you need to like really up your water or anything like that. But just kind of put that out there. Yeah. No, Thank you, because I don't want anyone to, you know, have any issues. Um, We do have another one last question. Tony B says, are liquid vitamins or supplements recommended? So with liquid, um, all right, liquid vitamins, a lot of times, (laughs) I'll be honest, it is really hard to change like a vitamin or a mineral into a liquid Mm -hmm. and get the amount that we need. So, so it ends up being like, you, you'll have to do a lot of liquids in order to make up all the things that we need. So I tend to not go in the liquid format. Um, I tend to stay chewable. Um, if I have to do something that's not a pill or a capsule, um, and then in supplement wise, and let's just say if someone is doing um, like like a probiotic supplement, they usually don't have them in liquid forms because they're actually like little live little guys, right? <laughs> in there. So in the capsule, yeah. So I'm like it doesn't it doesn't usually have it in that way, but mm. um, yeah, it, it just probably depends on what what maybe additional supplement you're talking about about um, liquid form, but. That's, that's the kind of thing with the vitamins, so really hard, hard to make so, them in So, Katie, are you saying that, that, like, a liquid formulation may be that the active ingredients may not be as active as... So, it might be... Up, so, let's say this. Uh, um, let me give the example of, of like, iron. Okay? Yeah. So, iron, we're, like, we want 45 milligrams of iron after surgery, iron is really, really tough to make into a liquid form. Usually a a small kind of dosage of a liquid iron is gonna get us five to 10 milligrams of iron. So you would have to end up being going like, okay, one, two, three, four and a half to make up that 45 milligram of iron. Oh, so wow. it's just hard to make a liquid form of a vitamin be in a really concentrated or a dose that we may need right? without it becoming cumbersome. <laughs> so that's what I would say. Like, that's the hard part. I'm like, oh, we could do it. But then I would really have to think through of like a liquid multivitamin and then extra yeah. B1, extra B12, how much extra iron. Let's look at calcium, vitamin D, and then trying to do all of those things in liquid. And some of them aren't also readily available in liquid either. So it just makes it more complicated. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's just so tough. See if there's any other questions. I don't see any. I just checked Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I know I didn't mention, like, CFUs. I just kind of was thinking about that. Like, so there's... CFUs is just colonizing forming units, and that's how they measure a probiotic. So that's how they measure the amount. Um, Typically, if someone is looking for like, hey, how many, like how much should I have? They're usually like by billions of CFUs Mm -hmm. is usually how it's done. And so um, usually about 15 to 30 is where I would be like a general kind of thing. Um, if I would go higher than that, Ooh, I really, I would use a higher dose if I'm working with someone because 
adding more people into that sandbox. And if you add too many and the sandbox can only fit so much, you're going to boot out others. And it, maybe you're going to boot out others that you still need. So I, I usually would look about 15 to 30 billion CFUs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's lots of things. Oh, great description. <laughs> that's a great description. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'm am like, looking here. I'm going to, um, I don't see anything else on Facebook and I know where we are here. I want to try to get us, um, within an hour and we're getting really yeah. close. So let's see. I just want to thank you, Katie, for being with us. And you really answered some, some of these questions are hard. And I think you put it in a context that made it really easy to understand for people. And also like what kinds of foods to eat. I think in summary, um, getting things from foods like whole foods is a wonderful way to get them, whether you're doing yeah. prebiotics um, or postbiotics or whatever. But if you can't, you can get supplements to try to help them. And then foods wise, you mentioned um, like your green foods and also mm -hmm. just really um, overall managing your body in a way that's healthy. I mean, all the good things that we hear all the time, you know, decreasing stress and um, I'm sure physical activity. I don't even know if you've said that, but I'm sure that plays into it a little bit too with digestion. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, all those does, things. All the things. And then if it gets really complicated, I just reach out to someone. I mean, I think that there's the digestive tract is, is its own kind of living, breathing system. And so uh -huh. we're, you know, it, it's, um, there's a lot of really wonderful things that it can do, but also if it just kind of doesn't feel quite right, then oh, I would be like, reach out. <laughs> I think it's always helpful to take a closer look as you're taking a closer look at all aspects of your health. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to tell you thank you and um, everybody that's here with us. We want to thank you for being a guest because that's what makes these so special is your yeah. your participation mm -hmm. and and doing them. We all love we all love doing them. So we're glad you guys are here and I guess just overall just have a wonderful wonderful week. And Katie, thank you so much for you being you. <laughs> Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for Bye, coming, everybody. Katie. All right. Thank Bye. You. Bye. -bye.